Hello and welcome to Secrets of Organ Playing podcast. This is a show dedicated to helping you become a better organist. We're your hosts, Vidas Pinkavichus and Usham Motuzaita Pinkavichin. We have over 25 years of experience of playing the organ. And we've been teaching thousands of organists online from 89 countries since 2011. So now let's jump in and get started with the podcast for today. We hope you'll enjoy it. A lot of times instrument will teach you everything you need to know. Sure, you just really need to learn to listen to yourself, what you are doing. Now we have to take this saying with this with the grain of salt because a lot of people today play at home with some kind of electronic instruments uh, or virtual instruments. In virtual instruments, the sound might be quite realistic, but the touch might be plastic, you see. And um, it's quite different from, from tracker touch. In a real pipe organ situation, uh, so people not necessarily might discover on their own when they play their home organs. Don't you think? But well, we can record themselves and listen how it sounds. And of course, you need to get opportunities to try different instruments. Yes, go to locations, various locations. That's 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 diff- more difficult than playing and practicing at home and enjoying the beautiful sounds from your living room and this is a very comfortable setting no one is bothering you there are no external sounds or disturbances but at the same time you also lose something right with the extended effort that you need to put in when you go to church uh, to practice and play the organ, you gain something from that experience as well. After uh, live concerts in ch- in the church as well, Usha, do, do you agree? Sure. But, you know, I think this fear of uh, maybe new environments and new instruments might come because you know so much and you have tried so many different instruments. But, for example, you know, for kids, we don't have such a fear. If you remember, I once had a lecture demonstration slash concert and slash public lessons for kids from a musical school at the museum of church museum on that tiny Italian style instrument. Yes, yes, I remember that. And, you know, before that, I was so much worried how all these, you know, little kids that have never tried organ to play an organ. We were all, you know, studying piano. And, you know, how we will do on that instrument when we will have to play for me something at the end of it. And actually, we did just fine because, you know, we didn't bother to, to you know, to be afraid of trying and, you know, of playing Another unfamiliar instrument, and we just did just great. They didn't overthink it. Sure, sure. Um, it reminds me of the experience when I had when playing, let's say, of this uh, this roll-up piano we recently got, right, Osha? Yes, we got yesterday. It's it looks scary, right? You can fold it up, fold it in a in a roll, and take it with you when you're traveling. But it it looks scary when you play. There are no no um, white and black key differences too much. A little bit of differences. Uh, sharp keys are a little bit higher than than white keys, just a little bit. And the touch is different, of course, from from either plastic keyboard or tracker touch. But as I discovered it myself yesterday, if you just do it, um, sooner or later you get used to that touch also. Of course, it's not that comfortable and maybe not even pleasant. 
to play like that. But uh, in emergency situations, when you don't want to miss practicing when you travel, I think it's it's a good tool to have. So uh, this comment I made like that it reminds me of of new I instruments when we discover when we travel, and they're not necessarily very scary either, right? Yes. As I said, the most important thing is to practice. What about audiation? You didn't mention too much your position on on the value of sight singing. Does it help people develop this mental thinking uh, in mental hearing that Daniel is talking about? Well, you know, what I strongly believe, I, I think that all the audition things must be done, must be developed, you know, until you are a teenager. Because this is, when you are a child, this is the things that you can develop very easily. And you are still very flexible. You know, if you only start to do audition when you are a complete adult, I, I think it will be really hard. It will, of course, give you some benefit, but 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 uh, I would not think it would do magic. Uh, so for, for people who are, uh, let's say, competitive in nature, they want to uh, participate in competitions, then this this type of learning it's probably too late for them right because they start too early too too late in their life but if they're only doing it uh, like daniel for themselves just to improve uh, why not yes in general singing is very very good you know for uh, any musicians i i usually emphasize singing uh, music that you play your own organ pieces, excerpts of melodies, uh, choral melodies, even hymn tunes, they, uh, right? Uh, what about opening any hymnal and just singing the hymns? Yes, but you know, it will not do you much good if you only sing the melody, soprano line. I think uh, if you know you really need to do the audition and you want to benefit from it, you need to sing Inner voices, let's say if you have four voices, then sing alto or, or tenor, it will benefit you much more than singing soprano line all the time. Or start just with two voices, one voice you play, one voice you sing and you switch. Yes, that's very beneficial. But I, you know, I really don't know how much time you have, you know, to do for such things because it, it takes time, it really takes time. Yes. Especially if you don't have, you know, uh, well-developed skills to do it. It might be really difficult. And might not be worth it, you see. Uh, yes, in some cases, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Usually people don't have full-time uh, devoted just for organ playing and improve organ practice, improving their um, audiation and the organ technique. So they need to do something very concise in that uh, area to, to, to learn something in 30 minutes or one hour or at the most two hours with some breaks in between, right? Sure. Every day, ideally. But some people don't even practice every day. That's the key. Yes, and you know, if you have all the long to do things every day of what Daniel talked about. All we are actually an excellent things, you know, but it, it takes really many, many hours to achieve it. Yes. So maybe this is a long conversation, right? Maybe we will split it in two halves to, to discuss it in two different podcast episodes, uh, almost 20 minutes. <laughs> Time flies quickly. Sure. Then the question is good. And very thoroughly detailed. Okay, guys, please send us more of your questions. We love helping you grow. And remember, when you practice... Miracles happen. 
This podcast is supported by Total Organist, the most comprehensive organ training program online. It has hundreds of courses, coaching, and practice materials for every area of organ playing, thousands of instructional videos and PDFs. You will not find more value anywhere else online. Total Organist helps you to master any piece, perfect your technique, develop your sight reading skills, and improvise or compose your own music and much, much more. Sign up and begin your training today at organduo.lt and click on Total Organist. And of course, you will get the first month free too. You can cancel anytime. If you like our organ music, you can also support us on Patreon and get free CDs. Find out more at patreon.com slash secrets of organ playing.